So my recent review of the Oculus Quest, I mentioned about a feature that Oculus was working on called the Oculus Link, a feature that would allow you to plug your Oculus Quest into a gaming PC and essentially turn it into an Oculus Rift. So when a software update for the Oculus Quest dropped last week, we all ran to the change logs only to find it wasn't quite that. So we'll very quickly breeze through some of the updates it received last week because I'm going to be honest, they're not the most exciting features in the world, but then the Oculus Link feature did drop this week, so we'll get into some of the details of that. So very quickly, what did we get last week? Uh, firstly, improvements to the search function in the Oculus Store. This is just a user experience change, so if you're searching for something in the Oculus Store, it will auto-complete to a title it thinks you're putting in, make it a bit quicker. Nice. Uh, next improvements to the way apps are being installed, uh, something I wasn't even aware was much of an issue because if you download a game, uh, usually you want to play it straight away, or they download so quickly it's not usually that much of an issue. But either way, uh, apparently if some people were turning off their headsets before the game was completing, they were having issues. So now if you're in the middle of downloading a piece of content and turn off the headset, it would delay the shutdown until the app has finished downloading and then it will shut down. Next is an update on added environments. Uh, so anyone who's used the Quest before is used to this uh, particular dome environment. It's nice and cozy and it makes me feel safe. So something they've added in this update, uh, something that Rift users will be used to is the classic Rift home, which is particularly a modern-esque uh, geometrical shape architecture. Yeah, but Oculus have just noted more of these environments will be added over time. Uh, one comment I did see in a uh, YouTube comment section, somebody said it would be great if games came with environments, kind of how like on PlayStation, you can sometimes download games that come with themes. In that respect, it would kind of be cool if you downloaded uh, Vader Immortal, for example, and you got a new environment, which was the inside of a spaceship. And lastly, three experimental features which were added, uh, which won't be there automatically. If you want to turn these on, you specifically need to go into settings, experiment, and turn each of these off. First is a new high score shelf specifically for Beat Saber VR, so that when you're in Beat Saber, uh, you'll be able to see high scores from your friends. Uh, next is achievements in VR, uh, work similar to like trophies in Xbox, for example. You'll be able to see when friends have received achievements for unlocking a new level or reaching a new high score in a particular game. And the last one just allows you to personalize your feed in the Oculus Store uh, by either hiding or boosting particular content based on your taste. So if you're not a fan of shooter games, for example, you can hide them and they won't show up as frequently in the Explorer. But as housekeeping of the previous update out of the way, let's get into the Oculus Link, which has now been released in beta. We'll get into that. So here's everything you need to know about turning your Oculus Quest into an Oculus Rift. Firstly, the PC you're plugging into should meet these minimum specifications. An Intel i5-4590 or AMD Ryzen 5 1500X or greater. Minimum RAM of 8GB, but more would be better operating system running Windows 10, and at least one USB 3.0 port spare in your PC. Uh, in terms of software, as we mentioned for the Oculus Quest, you should make sure that the newest version 11.0 has been downloaded. And for the PC, you should have the Oculus desktop app installed, and that should be running version 1.43 or 1.44, depending on where your lovely face is in the world. Mark said I have a lovely face. Uh, once you have both of those installed and updated, it should be as simple as running the app on the PC, turning on the headset, plugging the headset into the PC using a USB 3.0 cable, Again, we'll get into that. Uh, following the permission prompts in the headset and then following the on-screen instructions. So I said at the start of this, the Oculus Link update has been released in beta. Uh, let's get into some of the limitations. Firstly, in terms of PC specification, the one thing we didn't mention was a graphics card. And that is because in this beta state, there are certain graphics cards which aren't supported at this time. Specifically, those cards are the NVIDIA Titan Z, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060M and at this moment, all AMD graphics cards. However, Oculus have said, we're using this beta period to continue to test, iterate, and validate GPUs. As time goes on, we plan to move additional GPUs into the supported column by the time the software exits beta. And a final piece of the puzzle, uh, the cable to plug the Oculus Quest into your PC, unfortunately cannot be the cable which came with the Oculus Quest. Uh, as we mentioned, it specifically needs to be a USB-C 3.0 cable, whereas the one that comes in the box is USB-C 2.0. It's really only used for data transfer and charging. So as I mentioned in my review for the Quest, uh, Oculus plan to release their own version of this cable, which will be a five meter cable, giving you lots of slack for movement when you're in VR. It will be a fiber optic cable, uh, which will just be the highest quality for data transfer to try and minimize that latency as much as possible. And depending on the port you're plugging it into your PC, they've said may or may not be able to charge the headset at the same time, meaning you'll never run out of juice. But that cable is not set to be released until December. So the update is available now, 
what do we use in the meantime? Well, there's lots of people testing USB Type-C cables at the moment. The one that Oculus has specifically recommended is the Anker Powerline USB-C to USB 3.0 cable. They've linked to the cable for specific regions on Amazon. Um, however, what I found is the US one they linked to was three meters long, not quite the five meters of the official Oculus one they're gonna release. Three meters, still pretty good. The UK one they linked to was 0 0.9 meters. So you'll have to be pretty damn close to your PC and don't move around a lot. Um, I have found one that should be very similar, 1.8 meters. I've strayed slightly, I'm gonna give that a try, but it's not the one they linked to. So if, if it doesn't work, it's on me. But my entire thing is experimental anyway, because uh, for people unfamiliar with the channel, I do not have a gaming PC sat here to plug it into. I have a cloud PC uh, and it's that box right there. So we're gonna try VR and just see if it works over the cloud. <laughs> we're just experimenting here, all right? <laughs> That was all the latest news uh, for the update from Oculus um, in terms of VR in general. Half-Life 3, not Half-Life 3. Half-Life Alex? It's not Half-Life 3. Half-Life Alex. VR exclusive. That's it. I was going to do its own video, but Half-Life Alex. <laughs> but if you enjoyed this video, found it somewhat useful, uh, a like rating would be appreciated. If you have not already, remember to subscribe to the channel. And as always, I shall see you in the next one.